style over substance, what exactly does that mean? To put it simply, when the scenes playing out do not tell a story. Or to put it complex, when superficiality takes over and is used to supplement the lack of a story. Let me break down and show you what I mean by that. Hi, my name is Pat and today I'm gonna take a look at Don't Worry Darling. First things first, let me start with the positives. The movie is visually pleasing, the sets are stunning and the costumes are dapper. The main cast performances are enjoyable to watch and that's where the good things end. Now onto the bad bits. A movie should be viewed as a journey taking you from point A to point B. And while the movie does do that, it spins its wheels for the majority of its runtime. The movie progresses sparingly, if at all. It's important that scenes provide context giving the viewer new emphasis on new pieces of the puzzle in order to complete the story. If a scene does not do that, it is redundant. Now let's take a look at the scenes in the first hour of the movie. It sets up an idyllic 1950s lifestyle and introduces the conflict at the 10 minute mark through repressed memories resurfacing, establishing that something is wrong. In the subsequent scene, we get repressed memories again in the form of humming, hinting at something being wrong with this place. Okay, you have to stop humming that song. What is it? I don't know. In the next scene, we get outright told that something is wrong with the place. Why are we here? We shouldn't be here. The protagonist sees a plane crash and she herself reinstates that something is wrong with the place. What's wrong with you? Throughout, we are shown artistic renditions of something being wrong with this particular place. Eventually, she reaches the exit, after which she is brought back with a missing memory proving that something is wrong. The core statement that something is wrong is repeated in different ways over and over again for more than an hour. It should have been 30 to 45 minutes at max while continuously increasing the suspense. Eventually, the protagonist confronts the villain with unfounded allegations after he act her on. I do hope you keep going. And yet here you are, preparing dinner like a good girl. It's frustrating to see how the movie skips basic legwork of the protagonist investigating, planning and scheming in order to acquire any sort of proof. Basically, all the story elements that require writing skills were skipped. Instead, the movie has to rely on the villain coming forward to affirm her suspicions, simply because the movie needs to progress at some point. He admitted it to me in the kitchen, that's why I did that! She of course decides to run away right then and there. Her husband betrays her and we finally move on from the setup to the story. The movie is two hours long. One and a half hours in, we finally get introduced to relevant backstory. What the Victory Project is, who the characters used to be, and so on and so forth. But with no too little time left, there's almost nothing that can be properly explained or explored. Everything is kept brief and vague. And this is why I perceive the movie as shallow and superficial. This is not where the story is. This is where the story is. The first one and a half hours served to stretch out the premise of the movie, breaking out of the Matrix. But remember, Matrix did not spend three quarters of the movie on Neo breaking out of it. No, it spent time substantiating the idea of the Matrix and building character relationships. All the important world building and interesting conflicts are glossed over or not addressed at all. Like, who is her husband actually? Was he ever her husband? They mention a chosen identity. Her chosen wife, Alice Warren. Pre-existing relationship? Yes. How much has her brain actually been tampered with? Are any of her previous memories real? Does she not have friends, relatives or co-workers in the real world that are concerned about her disappearance? Are you aware that you are responsible for the physical upkeep of your chosen life? What if the protagonist or one of the other husbands had not returned for a longer period of time due to an illness or injury in the real world? The more interesting anomalies that could have happened were largely ignored in favor of speeches and theatrics that served no purpose. If you've seen some of my videos, I often advocate that in order to tell a good story, you'd want to stick to a few basics, namely the commonly used three-act structure, Aristotle's classical curve of suspense, and the modernized version of Freytag's pyramid. Storytelling isn't a rigid formula, but trying to adhere to these rules helps you keep an engaging pace and place key story elements well. I personally use these as guides in my own writing and storytelling. If we look at Don't Worry Darling, the first act should be concluded at the 30 minute mark, 40 minutes max. Instead, it keeps going until one and a half hours in, and then Finally, a new section of the story begins, and even though the character technically gets out, the story fails to progress in a meaningful way and instead repeats itself. I would have had her discover the exit but prevent her from actually exiting by a guard. This would have provided the protagonist with much needed motivation to investigate further and change the character's passive role who literally gets handed, told and shown everything at the right time in the right place, into a more active role. 
At the midpoint, she gets out and finds herself strapped to the bed. She fails to escape, gets electro lobotomized anew, and we're back at square one. But this time around, she retains a fraction of her memory. While she keeps up appearances, more and more disturbing memories resurface, like her husband never being her husband in the first place. He could have been a former patient of hers, who started stalking her and then eventually abducted her. There are lots of possibilities, but instead, we got more stylized nothingness. Killing the guy in charge at the end made no difference, as he had no power to stop the protagonist. All he did was yell into a telephone, who wasted potential for a twist where when trying to uncover the mystery, the mastermind could have been his wife and her husband nothing but an abducted victim as well, subverting expectations at least a little bit. Sadly, the premise has a lot of potential, but in the hands of an unskilled writer could not come to fruition. And yes, I checked, I watched Booksmart. Olivia Wilde and Katie Silberman previously worked on Booksmart, which has similar story issues as Don't Worry Darling. The premise sounds like a comedy that writes itself. Two nerds party for the first time, but apparently even a smidge of talent is necessary to make it work. I watched the movie and the comedy for the most part is a miss. I know comedy is subjective, but come on now. Another huge flaw in the movie is that until the 1 hour and 10 minute mark, nothing really happens. When something finally does happen, the best friends have a huge falling out at the biggest party in public. Cops break up the party, one of the protagonists gets incarcerated and after she's released, they're best buddies again, effectively sweeping the most interesting part of the story, which relies on nuance, conflict resolution and skilled writing, is swept under the rug. So yeah. Final thoughts. This movie is basically a boring take on Sword Art Online Asuna's POV where Kirito is called Bunny. Kidding aside, overall I was disappointed. There was a lot of potential here and the more creative writer could have definitely capitalized on that. It was basically a 2 hour long Florence Pugh audition tape where she was breaking her back trying to make the most out of it. And she did a fine job. If it had been a less charismatic and likable actress, I'd probably have ditched the movie halfway through. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my take on the movie. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my point of view and if so, on what grounds. I'd be interested to hear other opinions. Keep in mind it's just my opinion and I am not the ultimate and utmost authority on writing. And opinions may vary. With that said, leave a like if you liked it, sub to the channel if you'd like to see more. Check out some of my other stuff and I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching.